Hello and welcome to Rogue Trader. Owl Cat's Warhammer 40,000 game Rogue Trader has officially launched and we are about to kick off our first official playthrough. If you do go on to enjoy this playthrough, please be sure to drop a thumbs up and comment so I know to continue the series. Take up the mantle of a rogue trader, the scion of ancient dynasty of daring privateers that reign over their trade, protectorate, and explore the fringes of the known galaxy. Darkness looms over the bloodline of Von Valentius as it faces multiple threats from within its own ranks and without as countless enemies seek to destroy the most daring and brave agents of humanity. It is up to you to hold the reins of this shattered protectorate and forge a new path for the Von Valentius dynasty, currently finding itself in a vortex of wars, intrigue, calamities, and heresy. The stakes are high and rise even higher as you cross paths with terrifyingly powerful and ambitious adversaries in the darkness of the Coronis Expanse. So we're going to just take a quick uh, minute here. We are going to throw this on Daring. Um, just looking at some of the difficulty uh, levels, I think Hard will um, uh, probably start pushing us uh, a little bit too much. And I want to focus more on the playthrough here. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to stick with Daring for now just because we want to make sure we make progress. Um, choosing this difficulty is not recommended for players, so thank you. We know. Uh, so we can pick uh, different characters. <laughs> We're going to do a custom character. And I am hoping that I don't take too much time. I have an idea of kind of where I want to go with this, but we shall see. I think for the cards. Um, we. This one might make the most sense. Well, we'll, we'll come back. Let's take a, a second. Let's see what kind of facial structure do we want. Go a little tan. And Let's look, we'll go with this first one. Hair, let's see here. I think we're gonna um, go with a classic cut because I think we're gonna go with kind of an officer of the, uh, you know, like if uh, we're, we're probably gonna go more classic officer training here. Let's see, I kind of, I do kind of like this, this uh, style. So we're going to say, um, I don't really like scars or tattoos. I'm going to bounce back here, see if the faces change our choice. Much and we'll go. I guess I do like this one the best. All right, I'm not a big tattoo guy. Um, yeah, we're gonna go no tattoos. Augmentations. Um, We're gonna go uh, no augmentation. I'll see you. The Emperor. I don't need unleash the curiosity. See for the Emperor. Two arms. All right, we're gonna go pragmatic for now. All right, Death World. Um. So, I think. Our origin, we're going to go with Navy Officer. The Imperial Navy is uh, responsible for the fleet's void ships that assert the dominance of the Imperium 
amid the stars and fulfill all their duties connected to the void and warp travel. You, uh, you used to be a Navy officer and a commander of a void ship, hardened in numerous battles and famous um, for resounding victories. So zero cost for AP, personal cooldown for one round. The Navy officer and their allies in a three star radius gain plus two deflection breach archetype taken by the Navy officer. They cannot uh, cannot be forcibly moved or uh, over penetrated. So that will be helpful. And I think we're gonna maybe. Um, maybe uh, kind of build a a kind of ranged fellow leader is the thought process so now that we know that um, we're gonna want to come back here and just take a look so I don't like the minus intelligence and fellowship uh, minus strength is okay, but we're, we're really probably not, you know, we don't want minus willpower, minus fellowship, imperial world, um, fortress world. So we're going to just do imperial world. So an imperial world is one of the millions of planets united by the belief in the immortal god emperor. So, humanity's finest imperial world characters can select any characteristics except weapon, skill, or ballistics and add plus 10 bonus. So, that's kind of nice. Um, so, we'll just uh, hover over these. I don't want to read through all of them so we can get into some of the actual content here. I'm going to try to keep these at 30 to 45 minutes, but sometimes I get carried away. Uh, just to make it a little more uh, uh, digestible. Uh, so, those are the traits. So, we do have some good ones here. Um, all right, so oh, all right, now because we're in the Imperial world, we got our uh, additional modifier here. I Fellowship or business character ability to interact with other creatures to deceive, charm, or befriend them. High fellowship will help characters find a way to approach a gathering of untouchable servants. So persuasion, coercion, and commerce skills. We are going to focus on those. Um, agility measures character's quickness reflexes. Uh, so dodge chance. If a character uses a melee weapon, their dodge reduction is equal to the half of the agility. So we are going to go for... Uh, fellowship here, persuasion, coercion, and commerce skills are going to be our focus. We're a Navy officer, um, so we're already getting some uh, extra commerce here. Uh, it represents the character's business sense and their ability to make profitable bargains may give access to new dialogue options. So we're going to really maximize the commerce. So our triumph, uh, tech use, commerce, awareness is good, but we're going to focus. Your ship became the first to take a now reclaim warp route. The clusters of humanity's lost worlds so we have triple down on commerce darkest hour um we're gonna also do brand of shame just so we're not actually um kind of super negative in an area because we we want to build persuasion um no, i don't want to take a hit the logic so once in your past, when the temptation of easy gains got the better of you, you uh, resorted to piracy and were caught red-handed. Actually, that's kind of nice in the backstory. Choose archetypes to see descriptions. You can only choose one of the first tier archetypes at the moment. All right, so this is kind of nicely done. I like how they upgraded this, so it's now not as confusing as it was, uh, at least in the beta version and then early alpha. Um, we... Uh, officers so I feel like we're gonna go double officer what is this tactic master tactician oh man this gets complicated fast um, so take hold uh, the grand charge is choosing one combat tactic in each area every alley inside the area gains an additional turn with one AP and two MP at the start of the grand strategist next turn so that's nice, but then Master Tactician. Master Tactician empowers your next attack to deal 4% additional damage for every stack. 
Ooh. Ooh. So we're going to probably want a mass practitioner and grand strategist. So we are going to pick officer here. Um, we uh, bring it down, which is helpful. Grants an ally an extra turn with action points equal to two uh, and no more movement points. So we're going to probably just bringing it down on Argenta if that still works. Um, so we're going to focus on officer. So just just for awareness. So when we when we hover over officer and like any of these, um, we're going to want to look at uh, skills and characteristics, right? They're going to be a little bit different depending on what you're focused on, right? Like soldier, we're going to want some of the combat pieces here. We're going to want fellowship, willpower, toughness, uh, willpower, and fellowship are going to be modifiers, I believe. So down here we can see if the ally is under the effective voice of command and kills an enemy before the end of the officer's turn, the ally gains a one-time additional plus two times officer's fell bonus, right? And then here... Uh, we have fellowship bonus so you can see i'm kind of stacking like i'm not exactly min maxing uh totally you, you saw that but i'm i'm trying to be intelligent on uh kind of stacking um fellowship here uh because of the modifiers and then i'm pretty sure i thought uh i thought willpower influences something but maybe not let's take a look here so willpower uh, reflects character's so ability to withstand the horrors of the warp. Oh, I was confusing uh, willpower uh, a little bit, so it's different now. So we don't have to worry about that. So um, we are gonna probably be um, range ballistic. BS uh, reflects the character's accuracy in all forms of range weapons. So let's get you up um, agility. So ballistics is just this, uh, where is, can we, can we, uh, we maxed out at 55. So we have some great persuasion for now. Um, uh, we're gonna maybe put the rest in agility. So we don't care about, uh, um, necessarily demolition. Uh, but it improves the character's initiative, uh, which is good. So here's one of the things with the officer is you don't necessarily want the highest initiative because we're going to want to position other characters um, to be kind of in a better spot. So do we... Why don't we put this in, in uh, toughness to make you a little tankier? All right, I think we're good. Um, so we're gonna go with the Unforgiven. And because I backed early, I thought I could have chose a different ship, but maybe not. Well, the Unforgiven, here we go. Um, wait, we can finally <laughs> edit the name. I, I That might have been in the alpha later or um excuse me i played the alpha and i only played a little bit of the beta um we are shadow coast here we go that only took what a long time but in these games these decisions are important and i i transparently have intentionally not played for at least i want to say eight nine months it's been a long time could have been even a year um, I did play with, like when the beta first released. I played like a little bit of Act One. Let's get started. Kunrad Voikver. 
information. One has the best view of the cathedral from here. Mesmerizing, wouldn't you say? An impeccable manifestation of the God Emperor sublimity. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna we're gonna role play in character. So being in the Imperial Navy, commanding our own void ship, having turned to piracy a little bit, we're gonna maybe toe the line. We're gonna we're gonna. At that last piece, I think, was very critical of uh, getting caught for um, a little piracy. So we're not necessarily like fully bred into the the Imperial Navy, although that heavily influences us just in our in our origin. Um, so all this ostentatious luxury is laughable pretense. It is enough to make one think that the architects meant to compensate rather than glorify. In interesting. However, allow me to offer you a bit of advice. In the interests of your own well-being, you should frame your thoughts with greater piety. Demonstrating such a lack of care when choosing your words might be viewed by certain people as evidence of insufficient trepidation before the God Emperor, the master of humanity. So this, I think, is, is us. I prefer to serve by acting, not speaking. That is commendable, quite so. However, there are many, many who believe that toils in his name start with diligence in choosing one's own words. Remember that when next you are presented with the privilege of conversing about him with loyal servants of the Imperium. All right. Allow me to introduce you. Got it. Cover over. Conrad Voigtbeer, Master of Whisper. In the employ of her ladyship, rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, at your service. I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with you in person before. Ooh, this is nice. Uh, Drusus Brett Blessing. So we got a little origin in here. Commodore, we're Commodore Shadow Coast von Menard. My regards, Lord Captain. Though, perhaps, I should refrain from addressing you thus, ma'am, aboard this vessel. With all due respect, Commodore. I will be frank with you. You may forget your past titles, no matter who gave them to you, or what their origins are. From the moment you and the other candidate were brought aboard this void ship, your fate changed. You now serve Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius and carry the burden of an heir of this house. Henceforth, you share your dynastic name with her ladyship. Bear it with honor. Alright, so one thing I just want to do here uh, voice volume. Hopefully that helps. So, why am I aboard this? Uh, we're gonna say um, I assume you had some goal in mind when you decided to seek me out. Let's address but it. Of course, I have come to invite you to a meeting with Lady Theodora. I imagine you have many questions for your patroness, and I'm sure she has just as many questions for you. It is regrettable that you haven't yet had an opportunity to speak. It has been an arduous voyage thus far. Yes, it has. But it's only just beginning. The Lord's Captain and Master Edelthrad von Valencius are conversing on the observation platform. Let us join them there. Alright. I like it. I, I was a little nervous on some of the UI. Uh, changes. Um, I actually like the alpha, even though it's a little rough around the edges, more than the beta. But I think they they actually um, align to kind of a nice in between aesthetic. Interactable objects. Um, key here is hold tab to highlight objects, so you can see that. Uh, that's a key I always piece. keep my options open. Let's see. The sacred mechanism has interfered with 
without due uh, reverence, the duration of the data processing cycle has tripled. Interesting. All right, same, same kind of uh, piece. A massive conference table, obviously crafted from real wood, a resource of incredible value. All Is right. there money to be made? Let's. Uh, we're not. We're gonna. We're gonna try to advance advance the story a little bit here, um, but like I said, I'm gonna try to keep this. Uh, you know, to reasonable time limit per episode. And if, if you do want to watch more, Valencia's trophy rooms. Perhaps you would like to take a look around after your audience with the Lord Captain. But if you do want to see more and are enjoying this playthrough, please be sure to drop the thumbs up and please comment. Some action. You have been ambushed. The battle begins. To survive in the grim darkness of the far future, you will have to face enemies. Yes. All right. So we can't position ourselves. So we're going to start the battle. We're going to hide behind these guys. Oof! There's just one servitor. Twenty-six out of thirty hit points, and he just one-shot them. All battles in the game are turn-based, so we know that. We can left-click, uh, area double left-click uh, to then move. Movement points uh, determine how far you can go. So do we have to move to a specific area? It does not look like we necessarily have to. All right, we're gonna move here. Uh, wait, okay, to make attacks and your abilities in the uh, combat area, you must spend action points. So we have MP and AP, so AP are action points. So left click, or left mouse button. Um, you will see two areas uh, denoting the weapon's effective maximum range, so we just want to keep uh, range in mind. Certain abilities in the game are considered attack actions that can only be used once per turn unless affected by specific talents. So that's also important to note. If a character performs an attack action, they will not be able to attack again and will lose the remaining movement points until the start of the next turn. So we want to move and then attack. So. Real quick. Um, wait, the officer forces an ally to fully push themselves, increasing their characteristics by plus 15 for one round. All right, so that that is good. Um, brace for impact. Uh, gain two. Who, if not me? I should have. That's not three. All right. Um, Can we not voice a command you? Oh wait, they do have they do have the buff. It does look like they have the buff. But I can't I can only voice a command people I control. It's a bad idea. Alright. There we go. We're done. You're gonna miss? Oh boy. Oh boy. Coonrad, are you gonna... Don't hurt me. Um... Taking calculated risk is my second nature. I'll make it happen. Oh, I missed. I didn't look at the range. Your character just missed. To increase hit chance, equip a character with a decent weapon and place them on a vantage point. Abilities and talents that improve weapon skills characteristics will help you hit more often. For improved marksmanship, learn talents that increase the perception and ballistic skill sets. Ah, oh, we should have put it in perception. The secondary stat. A lot of missing going around. I think. I don't. Why are you. Alright, so I'm gonna right click on this guy. There we go. Um. I don't need luck. I have strategy. On it. OK. 
Okay, a little nervous on this one. You went for Coonrad? Oh, he's got dodge. I'm gonna right click on him again, so exploit. Oh, there we go. Who is waiting for me to, to weaken him before he finished What's him up? Suspiciously poor timing for such an accident. Servitors malfunction on the officer's deck at exactly the same moment when the rogue trader and her heirs are gathered here. I have blocked all passages between the upper and lower sectors of the residential decks. If this is a deliberate attack, it should stop the culprits from advancing their plan. Hmm. That's not suspicious at all. Spread out. No one is allowed to enter the premises. Stations. I'm afraid I must remain here. For Lady Theodora's safety, I have to oversee the execution of these orders personally. I hope you will have no difficulty reaching the observation platform on your own. It is just at the end of this corridor. Alright, so attack denial. Um, effectively, you can use certain weapons at close range. Uh, yeah, let's take a look here. Rise to the top, poor guy. Oh, we can, now, we can now right click on the map to send our. Yeah. Okay. That's that's helpful. It's kind of a different Alright, it still goes over to where we were. I don't recall that being in beta. Keep your wits about you. People are just going on the their way. The Grand Boy Ship Temple occupies the entire space below the officer deck and is lit by countless candles and lumens. A cool view. Doors like cracked open. Looks like. Let us not dawdle. Alright, we're not gonna dawdle, but. The lips carrying people around the decks move with loud grinding noises. Okay. I. Oh. Hold. Enter. I always have I mean, a it is. Plan. It is. It is kind of cool to. Look at so we're gonna reveal some of the map. Oh, we're not gonna reveal the map. They're not letting us over there. Okay, Always okay. keep your eye on the prize. Just gotta move in here. Got our tech priests hovering around something the over there. To be made. I'm assuming. Oh, here's the meeting. That is simply irrational, Lady Theodora, says the man dressed in peculiar garb. His voice tight with tension, his face half of which is covered with by sin skin, is twisted in a grimace of displeasure and disbelief. Assimilation into the trade structure would be a political and economical and economic suicide, practically admission of heresy. Alright, I'm looking at the time and we are gonna call this the first official uh, episode of our uh, official Rogue Trader playthrough um, as a Lord Captain from an Imperial world. So we're gonna see how this develops. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have more little flexibility of thinking with piracy. It could lead us down a dark path, depending. Um, we shall see. Uh, but if you do want to see more and see where this journey takes us, please be sure. To drop or hit that thumbs up and drop a comment just let me know that you're interested in watching and i'd be happy to post this journey thanks so much for watching and i hope to see you in future videos shadow coast out